when should you use a Godot input event method like underscore input or underscore unhandled input as opposed to capturing what you need in underscore process? Well, as with everything in game development, the answer is it depends. So I'm here to help you make an informed decision. Here's today's learning plan. Everything is chaptered out for our cherry pickers, and heads up, we'll be talking about a lot of built-in methods today, and for the sake of both of our sanities, I'm not going to say underscore every time I'm naming one, so just assume it's there. Now, let's dive in. In the underscore process method, you work with input actions, whereas the input methods act on input events. Understanding the difference is key to understanding how you should be handling an input. An input action is nothing more than an alias or label for something you want to happen when you push, hold, or release a button, key, or analog stick. Things like move left, or shoot, or open menu could be valid input actions. Input actions exist because the abstraction is more straightforward and easier to deal with when coding, it makes setting up multiple inputs for the same function easier, it allows you to utilize multiple input devices without additional code, and it makes input remapping easier. Input events are associated with the device input itself. Whenever Godot detects a change on any connected input device, so a button was pressed or released, a stick was tilted, the mouse has been moved, etc., Godot fires an input event. The input event contains relevant information about what just happened, including any input actions the event may be assigned to. Unless you're stumbling on this video before trying Godot out, you've already seen this relationship in action when setting up inputs in the input map. You add an input action, a label for a thing that happens in your game, and you assign an event to that input action. When Godot detects an input event, that event is processed by a series of input methods in a specific order. On the input event page of Godot's documentation, linked in the description below, you'll find this diagram. This diagram shows in what order input events are handled. We're concerned with these steps here. Each of these steps has an associated input event handler method that will get called whenever appropriate. Here are all of those steps using their individual methods. Input is the first method called when an input event is detected, and it will be called on all input events. If the input is mouse movement or a click over a control node, GUI input is called next. This method is intended to be used if a UI element needs more functionality than what Godot offers out of the box. If the input is a key or joypad button, the second method called after input is shortcut input. If you didn't already know, you can set up shortcut key and button combinations in Godot, and this input event method is intended to listen for and handle those, but it will also be called when a single key or button is pressed. Unhandled key input is called on keyboard key events after the shortcut input method, and last but not least, we have unhandled input, which is called on all types of input events unless GUI input was called. If GUI input is called, that's as far as the event gets passed. Here's a simple scene that's nothing but a control node set to full rect, so it will take up the entirety of the window when we hit play scene. It also has the script that we were just looking at attached to its root. I've made the output console a bit bigger to show output because updating labels in the input event methods doesn't always work the way I like it to. Now I'm going to play the scene, and I'm going to type a key with the window focused. Which input events will fire, and in what order? 3, 2, 1? If you guessed input, then shortcut input, then unhandled key input, and finally unhandled input, you're right. But why do they show up twice? It's because two events got fired, the key going down and the key being released. Okay, so I'll clear those out and I'll bring the window back up. Now, what methods do you think will be called and in what order when I mouse over the window? All right, it looks like input was called first and then GUI input. Remember, the control node is covering the entire window. So after input, it will go to GUI input and then stop. So Godot detects an input event, passes that event to underscore input, and then it passes it to other input event methods in a specific order, depending on where the input came from. Seems simple enough. The thing is though, scene trees can get pretty complicated, and there can be multiple nodes that care about a specific input. If you have a pause menu up in an FPS, for instance, you wouldn't want to click a button and have your character shoot. And that's saying nothing about the pause menu itself, which can very easily have multiple control nodes overlapping each other. Because of this, Godot allows you to consume input events when they're dealt with. 
Consuming an input event tells the engine it's been handled, and it will stop that event from triggering any more input event methods on itself or other nodes. We're back in our original script. In underscore input, just below the print statement, I'm going to consume the event by calling the set input as handled method on the main viewport. The way this is written is that any input event that passes through underscore input, which is all of them, will be consumed at this point and it will not propagate further. Let's see what that looks like. With our game running, I'm going to press the A key right now. Input printed twice, once for the key going down and once for it coming back up. But do you remember that before, key presses were passed down to shortcut input, unhandled key input, and unhandled input as well? Now they're not, because we're consuming all of the input events in the first method. It doesn't matter what key we press, S, D, F, G, the event will never get past the input method. That's how consuming an input event works, but where it comes in extra handy is in making sure that input events don't move on to other nodes. When an input event is detected, the bottommost node in the scene tree handles the input event first, the second to the bottom node would handle it second, and so on and so forth. How far the nodes are nested has no bearing on this. This diagram is on Godot's input event page, if you're curious. I've replicated that diagram here using node 2Ds. On each of these node 2Ds is a script. It's similar to our last script, save for two differences. First, GUI input is not here because we're using a node 2D, and that input event method is only available on control nodes. Second, we're printing the name of the node before the input event method name so that we can see how events propagate up the scene tree. With the scene running, I'm going to press the A key and... Look at that output. As you can see, input events propagate from the bottommost node and each node's input method is called before the event loops back through shortcut input and then the unhandled input methods. Each set is displayed twice, again, because the event fires when the key goes up and down. Say I want to stop the event in node 3's unhandled input method if it's the space bar and it's being pressed down. I can add the following code. I'll save this, go back to Godot, and run my scene. Alright, I'm going to press the space bar, and let's stop the game and look at the output. Alright, the event does indeed stop in Node 3's unhandled input method and does not propagate further. This next call to Node 1's underscore input method is when the key is being released. Because of the nature of input event methods, that they only fire when an input event happens, they're not ideal for handling continuous input, like a button being held down. For that, you'll want to use underscore process. At any point, the engine can only know whether a button is up or down. Since underscore process is called over and over on a loop regardless of whether or not an input is triggered, the engine knows that if a button is down for two iterations in a row, the button is held down. In both underscore process and underscore input, you can check is action pressed to see if the action is pressed down right in that moment, but only underscore process has is action just pressed because it's able to check and see if that action was pressed in the previous process iteration. You now know how the input event methods work, but that still doesn't answer the burning question. When should you use them? Well, that's the thing. The input event methods are just another tool in a toolbox. There aren't any set in stone best practices on when to use them, and it's totally possible and okay if you go your entire game dev career without ever touching them. The general rule of thumb that I myself go by is this. If you're handling character or continuous input and the input action is what you're most concerned with, use underscore process. If you have a specific thing that needs to happen when a specific input mechanism is triggered, like a mouse look translating to camera look for a first person game, use the input event methods. And when in doubt, just stick to underscore process. As a bonus, I want to quickly mention why we've been focused on the underscore process method and didn't mention underscore physics process. It's because you shouldn't really be using underscore physics process to capture inputs. I know, I know, Godot's built-in character controllers use underscore physics process, so how can it be that bad? Well, it won't be in all cases, but it will be in most. Let me explain. Both process and physics process are called repeatedly when your game is running. By default, physics process is called 60 times per second at regular intervals, and process is uncapped and will repeat as often as it can, 
oftentimes at irregular intervals. Since what we see with our eyes is updated in process, if that's being called substantially more than physics process, which it usually is, and we're capturing our input in physics process, it's very likely you'll start to feel input lag when moving faster objects. Now, if the object is moving slowly or the physics tick is super close to the frame rate, like if you capped your frames per second to 60, this input lag is significantly less noticeable, but it is still there. The bigger the discrepancy, the easier it'll be to notice. So a good rule of thumb when moving physics bodies like character controllers is to capture the input and process, store it in member variables, and use those member variables to move your physics body in physics process. That's all I've got on the input event methods for now. I hope this helps clarify what they do and how they can be used. Until next time, I wish the best to you and yours. And I can't wait to see you again.